Currently we are in Kuala Lumpur. Behind me is the Petronas Towers. I got the weekend free, so I'm visiting here, doing a little bit of sightseeing. But anyway, to get to today's episode, we're talking about what it's like living and playing football in Southern Thailand. Now, I know a lot of you that watch my channel are footballers and would like to play in Asia, you know, Singapore, Thailand, Vietnam, Indonesia, wherever. And I'm going to give you an insight of what it's like playing football in Southern Thailand. Now, when you go to a different country to play, you can't always play in the capital city. So in Thailand, you can't always play in Bangkok or, or a big city like Phuket, Chiang Mai, Pattaya. So some players, they live in more remote areas like I did, Narati Wat, where there's not much to do, you eat very local, and maybe some of you can't really cope with this. So that's something to consider as well if you want to come over to Asia and play. So before I start, hit that thumbs up and let's get to it. So to continue from my previous episode, the big boss of Nara United signed me for my old team Chumpon FC. And when I say big boss Nara United, yes, that is what we called him. He had this, he even had this shirt with his picture on it and a big boss Nara United. So, you know, it was pretty funny, but he was selling these shirts at his shop. But anyway, to get to Narati Wat, when I first flew from Bangkok to Narati Wat, I went to check in in Bangkok airport and the lady asked me, where are you flying to? And I said, Narati what? And she's like, are you crazy? What are you going to do there? And I said, I was just joking around. I said, I'm going on holiday. And she was like, what the hell? Because it's a dangerous, dangerous city. And when I arrived an hour later, um, I got picked up by the management and we got checked before we left the airport. Our car got a bomb check everything scanned underneath by the uh, Thai army. So that was an insight into what we were going to get into. But in terms of safety, Naratiwa was not so bad. I know it's the most dangerous city in Thailand, but the attacks that occur normally occur in the villages, not inside the city because there's army checkpoints to get in. I think during my time, only one ATM got blown up and also one shop. And I felt reasonably safe the whole time. So it wasn't really a big thing to worry about. Now in terms of living, I had a small studio apartment. I had the basic stuff, you know, an air con, uh, toilet, TV, refrigerator, Wi-Fi. It was more than enough. And I had a scooter to get around the city. And in terms of food, I went to the market. I would try everything. I love local food. I'll try this, I'll try that. I don't even know what it is, I would still try it and that's the best thing about living and playing football in Asia, you get to try all of these awesome foods with different spices and that's what I love. One thing I always do whenever I go to a different country, I buy a rice cooker, I cook the rice and then I go to the market, buy stuff like fresh fish, come back, grill it and have it with some vegetables that I bought from the market as well. Beautiful. Now if you Google Narati Wat on TripAdvisor, you won't find much. There's not much to do. In my whole time that I was there, six months, I saw maybe five foreigners. So it's pretty isolated. You get some visitors from Malaysia passing through. Uh, there's a beach, not many people use it. But uh, we had some trainings there and it was good. In my spare time, you know, at night time, I would go to the 7-Eleven, it's a 24-hour shop, it's a small convenience store, you know, pick up a Magnum ice cream, everyone loves a Magnum, and the people at 7-Eleven knew me well. But let's get back to the football. My new football team was better than my old team, Chumpon FC, it was more technical, they liked to pass the ball around, and the foreigners on our team, we had three other guys, two from Cameroon, they were brothers, and one Nigerian player. Nigerian Eagle, Francis Dumaka. And Francis and I had a good relationship on the field. And that's because most mornings at 6.30, I'd get a knock on my door and Francis and I would go to the local field and practice our technical work, passing, finishing, and that translated onto the field. He scored heaps of goals and I made a lot of assists.
He even dedicated a goal to me after he scored a penalty with a little kangaroo celebration. I'll show you that in a video. Francis. <laughs> So in my first game at Narati Wat, I was introduced to the all the fans at the stadium with two other local players and then I think after the 65th minute I came on. One of the first balls I got was on the left hand side on the wing. I dribbled it down the side and then I went to cross and I looked inside someone was coming through the middle so I passed it to them, one touch and they finished. It was a great start and you know that's that's what you want and the rest of the season we did really well we finished in first place we actually beat my old team Chumpon FC and the funny thing is when we won the league we went on the back of a truck around the city it was like the Champions League but you know our big bus was a truck so it was pretty funny but it was a great experience now just because we finished first doesn't mean we got promoted. So at the time the third division was broken up into different regions. We were playing in the southern region and would have to verse the ch other champions from different regions. So we would fly to the north of Thailand to play these massive promotion games. There would be thousands of fans watching and it was an awesome atmosphere. We would fly to east uh, Thailand, west Thailand and there would be really good games to play in. Unfortunately we lost a couple games and we couldn't get promoted and the messed up thing was in our last game we were playing against Fitzsanalok, it's 20 hours drive from Narati Wat and because we couldn't get promoted the management was, were pretty, pretty bad about this and we had to travel in a van instead of flying. So a 20 hour drive. The first day was 10 hours, and then we stayed in Bangkok overnight, next day another 10 hours and then we played our game. So it just shows you the mentality of some some clubs, some uh, management. When things are going wrong, they treat you like crap. But when things are going good, you know you're a god. So it's so important to take care of yourself because if you're injured, then they don't want you. So remember that, guys. Treat your body like a temple and put yourself first. Because at the end of the day, no one wants a broken down soccer player. After that game, the season was finished and. They dropped me off at Bangkok airport and then my next journey would be in Germany and in Luxembourg playing there in the first division. You've probably seen a couple of videos that I produced in the past and that was how my journey went. I went from Thailand to another place and now I'm back in Malaysia. So I'm always traveling and I love it. So what can I say about the experience? It was good but it was difficult. You know, the place there, there's not much to do. You're staying at home, maybe you go out, eat with your friends, but there's not much to do. You can't go to the cinema. If you want to go somewhere, you'd have to fly. Fly to Bangkok, that takes a lot of time. So, it, it's difficult. But in saying that, the football atmosphere was amazing. You know, 10,000 fans coming to watch your game, you felt alive. And that made, oh, that, I don't know how to describe it, it was amazing. So that was the main thing I was there for, the football. And it was definitely a good experience for six months. And I definitely recommend trying it if you want to come overseas and play football. Now, if you want to play football overseas, like I said before, you've got to have good network, good contacts. I gave the advice that you should contact players in the country. You know, there's a lot of foreign players here. And maybe a lot of them won't reply, but maybe you might get one or two that will reply. I've got my friend, for example, he gets 50 request a day from players asking for help and he just denies every single one of them because he doesn't have time to reply to all. So, you know, even though you get rejected, there might be one or two that might reach out to you and help you. So, don't give up and keep on trying if you want to play football overseas.
All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and um, hit the thumbs up if you haven't already. And thanks again for watching, and until next time, ciao.